So I've done a sim, uh, my final sim, and I just did a play blaster. Just give it a quick check. So that's all looking pretty good. Um, and I'll just reposition my camera to sort of encompass the whole of the explosion. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a ground plane for it. I've got my floor, obviously, which is my collision floor, um, which isn't very big. If I scale this up, it's going to really lag because it's going to feed into the Bifrost graph and it's going to try and update. So I'm just going to hide that and I'm just going to make a new plane. And I'm going to scale that right up. Like so. Um, and I'm just going to apply a new material to it, which will be a Arnold standard surface. Um, and I'm just going to give it zero specular, um, mainly because I just want to sort of minimize the amount of things that are being processed in this scene. And the only specular would have been on that floor, and I don't really need it, so I've just turned it off. So, um, with that, I'm just going to go into the render settings and I want to change my render image size. I'm going to do 1K square. Um, and under my render settings, I just want to get rid of there's no specular in the scene, there's no transparency, and there's no subsurface scattering. So they can all go to zero. Um, and then I want to make a light. So I'm just going to go Arnold Lights, Physical Sky, like that. Um, and let's just have a quick look at some of the settings here. We want to go to the base sort of sky dome aspect of it. Um, just going to put this up to two for slightly less noisy shadows. Um, and our other important setting here is volume samples. Um, I've opened up the Arnold help page. Um, I think this is a really good help. It's one of the better ones out there for you know from a bit of software. It's got quite good examples and it's always got loads of images and stuff like that. So I highly recommend using and looking at this. Um, I'll copy that into the underneath the video. So we want to look at lights. So volume samples in lights basically it just helps get rid of the noise within your volume if you turn that up. Um, the default is at 2. I think I'll probably just leave it like that for the time being. Um, the next thing I want to do is... Let me just double check I've got everything set up. Um, I'll put that there for 2 for samples, which would be... Samples. So, is that the sample bit? Yeah, it's just a, it's another noise setting for the sort of shadows. Um, so I put that up to two rather than one, and I'm just going to do now a open up the Arnold render view, and I'm just going to do a quick render of this and see where we are. Um, when I hit play on this, it's going to take quite a while because it takes a while to load up the cache into Arnold. But once it's there, you can start tweaking it. It's got a quick, quite a quick update rate. So I'm going to hit play. Pause the video and come back in a minute. Right, so it started doing the progressive render. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want the lights coming from behind it at the moment from the sun. So uh, I'm just going to rotate that round in the physical sky. Uh, I'll probably go 140. Uh, maybe 170. That's no, gone too far. I'm going to go uh, 25 like it. Uh, let's go 120. Nope. Uh, zero. That's there. So let's just keep cranking. So it's going that way. I want to go minus. That's why. So I'm going to go minus 90. Make that minus 75. Give it a bit of an angle. There we go. Um, so now we've got the, the sun is in, coming from over here. Um, and the next thing I want to change is, well, I'm just going to go through and show some of the settings we've got here in our render settings. So um, if I zoom into this bit, which I'll just 
to zoom in there. So that's now sort of rendered. Um, so if I put that up to three, it's going to make it slightly less noisy. Um, probably the same if I go to the light. Let's move that out of the way. Use it, take that up to three as well. So that's, I mean, we are zoomed in massively here. I'm at 567%, so it will be quite grainy anyway, but you can see I've got rid of some of that noise. Um, and the next thing I want to look at in my render settings is, where did I hide them? Um, what do I do with them? Just lock this so I don't do that again. Right, so um, under ray depth, we have a volume setting. Um, this is by default set to zero. Um, if we look at the ray depth setting, um, the volume one, it's um, the number of times scattered bounces or the multiple scattering of bounces of light through the volume. Um, as you can see, from zero, you get that, and then five, you get a very light, fluffy looking cloud. Um, so if I put that out to say something like three, you can see already this gets a lot lighter. You get a lot more um, light bouncing around inside the density of it. Um, but as a result, it takes a lot longer to render. Um, this will really make your renders a lot heavier. Um, so even at one, I think you get quite a fair bit of difference between one and zero. You can see there, but I'll probably just leave it at zero for this for this one because I quite like the darkness of the uh, smoke makes it look more petrolly. Um, so there's the sort of fundamental settings. Obviously, if you want to generally get rid of noise, you can I can crank up my camera AA to maybe four. Um, let's see what that does. makes it smoother um, but I'm gonna leave it at three just for speed and let's go back so and that's the render setting so we've had a look at the volume in direct uh, the volume in the ray depth um, let's just have a quick look and see if we can no I think I changed that we had a look at volume samples didn't we that got rid of some noise in there as well um, so let's have a look at the shader um, I'm just going to click on it here. So we set all this up earlier with our voxel fog density controlling the density, so that's giving us our smoke. Um, this scatter setting is about how much um, sort of light gets scattered through, and this is where you can sort of change the color of your smoke if you wanted to. Uh, I can make it more brown as you can see there um, I'll probably just leave it as it is um, we can make it darker obviously um, <clears throat> and then we've got a transparency setting um, which lets you sort of make it a lot darker I mean it's gone just completely sort of all just fog density now or bring it back up again and also we can control the sort of general depth of the, so for about 0.5 makes it a lot more transparent. If I went to one, you're just basically seeing the emission now. We're getting rid of all the sort of density. Um, I'm gonna put that to 0.2, I think. Again, something like that. Um, and let me just put that back to, is it white? No, it wasn't white, was it? It was. I might just control Z that go back to where it was before. It was there, wasn't it? Uh, so I'm going to put that back to two. So we're getting a bit more. And then let's go down to our, our black body emission is basically how bright our sort of fire aspect of it is. 
And you can also, I think, color it. So we can make it green if we wanted to, or blue. But I don't think I want blue flames. Let's control Z that. Um, and then our temperature, this is where we can control how intense our flames look. So this uh, Kelvin temperature here, crank that up to say two, it's gonna get really white hot. Um, and I think I'm probably gonna take it down a bit more. So three, might go 1.4. Give it a bit more and then this sort of black body intensity this sort of adds it's a bit like sort of adding more levels I mean like a, uh, like a you know color correction level it sort of makes the whites more intense so if I put that up say to like one you can see we're getting quite a very intense flame here um, the other thing I want to do which I've kept to the last is this fog density um, you can get some quite good if I put this down to one, you'll see it just gets rid of the smoke again. Um, I've got it at 10. But you could, I mean, if you went to 100, I mean, you'll get something like that, which is really sort of black smoke. And it really starts to pull out the details in these little, you know, volumes coming around here. But this may be a bit intense. So I'm going to go see what 60 looks like. Maybe... 40, maybe 70, no, still, and then about 40. That's quite good, but I think this is still a little bit too bright, it should be a bit more smoky. So I'm going to go to 50, I think. Um, and I think that's going to be about it from my shading. I'm quite happy with that. Um, what would this changing the scatter do? So you can see it sort of makes it more intense, but because the light's not bouncing through it, you're starting to lose the volumes. It's just becoming quite silhouetted. Um, as you go back, you start seeing that light that's being, it's almost like subsurface scattering, sort of bouncing around a little bit inside these volumes. Um, which is where you get this really nice you know, uh, drawing of the sort of volumes and the shapes, the chiaroscuro of it. Anyway, um, so I'm going to leave that at that, I think, and just let that play through. It'll probably take about five minutes to render it at this last frame. And obviously this is the, the largest frame it's going to render, as it were, because it's the biggest part of the volume. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and I'm going to render out this animation sequence. So I've rendered that out and um, this is what we've ended up with. Um, I think it's looking really good up here. Obviously because I've got it quite a, a low resolution, this sort of bottom bit is a bit bobbly. I could do with a bit more detail there in the initial explosion and maybe had it a bit brighter or hotter um, and it is a little bit slow at that beginning or maybe I should have uh, added more speed going upwards that I took away it sort of made it a little bit sort of like coming out there um, but generally for the resolution um, I think it looks really good I mean I'm really impressed with Bifrost and you know how quickly you can set something like this up which would have taken a very long time in the uh, Maya fluids um, and also this simmed out um, at resolution of 1.1 it only took uh, an hour and 10 minutes on my computer so it's a very quick sim um, and the rendering took three hours and 35 minutes so, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, if, if you've ever used Maya fluids and things, other things, this would have taken a very long time to render, especially if you were using mental ray or something like that, it would have almost not rendered. Um, so that's sort of it, really. Um, 
I might just do one more last video where I just go through the graph again just to make sure I've not you know, missed anything out for people to have a look at. Okay, cheers.